Hello, everyone. Welcome back to How Come. Ooh, I bet you thought this season was over. Well, it was. But we didn't really say goodbye. And then I had a conversation with a friend that I was like, this would make for a really good episode. So here you go. It's a bonus episode and it's with a mystery guest who is a friend of mine. She's a different mystery guest than the one that we've had before. And her and I were talking the other day about this thing that she did at one point in her life, which was she went on 50 first dates in one year. And I was like, I need to know how that went. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. And um, we didn't do a congratulations episode this year, unfort. So send me your messages. If you have had a congrats within this year or last year or any of the years since you listened to How Come You Came or you came in a new way and you want to be on an upcoming episode uh, next season, DM us, email us, info at howcomepodcast.com or How Come Podcast on Instagram. Okay, let's get this episode started. How come? How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just. This guest today, one of my great friends. They need no introduction because we are not allowed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> welcome, my, uh, my mystery friend. Thank you for having me. I feel like the. Uh, mystery airhead flavor. Do you know the, have you ever had the mystery airhead flavor? Do I know mystery airhead? Okay. Do you love it? I love it. I am convinced maybe it's pineapple. Is it pineapple? Can I tell you? I know exactly what it is. Would you please share with yeah. the class? So the mystery flavor, if you guys have not had the mystery airhead, it is the white airhead and they always say, oh, it's a mystery. And sometimes you're like, I think, I think I can tell what flavor this is. And it's always a little, little different. And the, no, oh. the reason for that is mystery is the leftover batch of all the other flavors in the factory. I don't believe a word you're saying. It's true. Is it true? Yeah, I've looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Not for this occasion, just because I was curious one day. I was like, what is it? Like, I always think I know. And then, yeah, wow. it's always a little different. It's always a combo of all the other ones. And it's before they add the uh, coloring. Wow. So it's just white. I'm so surprised that they managed to make it white because wouldn't you imagine that the airhead would look black from all of the different I'm saying colors? all the other ones, Yeah. they're just flavored. Oh, they're just flavored. Before they're colored. Oh, fine. Okay. Case closed. <laughs> all right. <laughs> cool. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're, we're not here to talk about we're airheads not. today, even though they're delicious and mystery flavor is my favorite. Um. I brought you on today because you did something very, very interesting a few years ago. Last year. Last year. Yeah. Why does it feel so long ago? Time is is a funny thing. Yeah. It was beginning in October of 2022. Okay. Yeah. Running all the way through. Okay. Well, you tell everybody what that thing is. I went on 50 first dates. Like our favorite Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore. Which, by the way, have never seen it. Never seen it. What? Worth watching. Should I watch it? Yeah. It is strange, but I love it. And there's a lot of pineapple in it if you like pineapple. Really? Yeah. Oh, I guess I'm sensing the illusion. Is it related to pineapple? Okay. So I don't want to spoil it, <laughs> but it's an old movie at this point. Okay. But Fifty First Dates, um, Adam Sandler meets Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore has a... A type of amnesia where she wakes up every day and she thinks it's the same day every day. Whoa. Like she can't retain new memories from that day. Whoa. And um, it happens to be on her dad's birthday and she always like gets a pineapple and they like go do something together. So like every day she goes and gets a pineapple. Like they have like a huge stock of pineapples at their house. Oh. And her dad prints her the same newspaper every day because he doesn't want to like jar her okay and um so adam sandler meets her in a diner and they have this like meet cute and they have this whole day and they're like falling in love and stuff and then the next day she doesn't remember him <gasps> and so the whole movie is like him courting her while she has no memory of meeting him before did she get the, does she get it figured out what's going on with her brain no <sighs> 
I mean, this sounds like a larger issue. Spoiler, spoiler. I'm not going to watch it. They end up together and he makes this video for her that explains it every morning. I just like that goosebumps a little. Yeah. That's so sweet. It's sweet, but it's also like, what if it wasn't true? Like, what if somebody just like kidnapped you Uh and they were like, actually, you have amnesia. Uh huh. And I'm your husband. Right. And these are our kids that you raise. Like, they end up having kids. I'm like, she they wakes. Do? Yeah, like, I'm like, she wakes up pregnant one day and is like every day. Ooh. She's like a little more pregnant. Like, and is she understanding what? Like, what happened? That part, like, doesn't happen. Okay. I'm just saying, like, in the. Oh, it, theoretically. Theoretically. If that right. You wake up one day and you're nine uh, months pregnant, pregnant. You'd be like, what the fuck? Is there anyone with like Alzheimer's right now who is pregnant and like forgetting that they're pregnant? Like, could that be a thing? In theory. In theory, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying I mean, also. Tell me. There could be somebody who has no memory loss at all mm-hmm, who got mm-hmm. kidnapped. Mm-hmm. And then someone's like. We've been together. Like a you... gaslighting kidnapping? Yes. Like gaslighting amnesia? Like a lie. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. Mm-hmm. And I want to say right now that that would never happen to me, but who is to say? Who's that could, to say? That could. And it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And oh. it is cute because they are in love and a stuff. A gaslit but it's... pineapple yeah. situation. Yeah. Jeez. Anyway, so your 51st dates involves no amnesia. And no amnesia. That's good because- well, I wish I had amnesia over some of them. I really? mean, and when I say 50 first, first dates, there were there was maybe a fifth or a sixth or a seventh for one of those. Yeah. For several or, or a handful of those. 50 new people. 50 new people. Uh-huh. 50 new people. Yeah. And what inspired you to do it? A breakup uh-huh. inspired. Mm-hmm. A, a breakup inspired marathon. And I decided... I've always been a kind of monogamous. Yeah. Not even kind of like completely a monogamous kind of person. I, I'm a ra- relationship kind of gal. Mm-hmm. So I took some time between my previous relationship and my slew, my marathon of mm-hmm. dates to have some just me time. And then I decided to get back in to the, to the dating game. But I've always been someone who has either met someone through friends or Mm -hmm. been set up or the last boyfriend that you had just broken up with what number boyfriend was he in your life Uh, maybe boyfriend number three I think serious boyfriend number three okay so I've had serious boyfriends for a long period of time it's never been like serial monogamous like three months yeah dating spree yeah it's been like hardy long-term relationships Mm mm-hmm and coming out of this one, I was like, okay, wow, everyone is married at this point. Mm-hmm. And how old it, were you? I was 33. Okay. So everyone, at, at least to me, it felt like everyone is in these long term relationships. Or at least not, had done their first marriage. Had done their first, <laughs> right, on their way to maybe their second. Mm-hmm. And so I felt like maybe I had to go on the apps and the dreaded apps. Okay. Because. You know, gone are the days when you s- roll into some kind of house party. Who's mm-hmm. doing that? At least in my mind, house parties are happening. But in my mind, I thought, okay, got to go on the apps. Got to mm-hmm. go on the apps. But you initiated the breakup. Correct. So it wasn't like a, I need to get over this person. No, no. It was more like, I feel like I need, not that I've w- wasted time, but I was feeling a certain way in the yeah. relationship. And so I was checked out from it emotionally and so I was feeling like I was making up I had to make up for lost time Mm -hmm. and it was especially felt like the case for me during COVID when yeah I wanted to do all of these things but I didn't allow myself were you in the relationship with him during COVID yeah yeah and where does one amass 50 first dates easily through the apps yeah why did you want to do 50 it was not my intention it was not my intention I just counted the number of dates I had gone on before landing my now 
ex-boyfriend. Yeah. And it was happened most to be recent. 50. Yeah. Most recent. Happened to be 50 dates. And mm-hmm. so I thought, wow, what a nice even number. How about that? I mean, it was merely coincidental. And I guess if you want... If you wanted to go on 50 first dates in Manhattan mm-hmm. and Brooklyn and the outer boroughs mm-hmm. over a year-long period, you can do it. Yeah. There are enough human beings. I think you could do it anywhere. You could do it anywhere. I mean, maybe not anywhere, actually. I, mean, I feel like there's a lot of towns where, like, the people get recycled. You could. So 50 first dates with, like, the same yeah. person <laughs> dressing up differently and calling themselves different yeah. names. But in New York, we got a lot of people here. Mm-hmm. It's, it's There's a lot. There's a lot of places you can meet, yeah. a lot of people you can see. Yeah. Was it date one that you started, like, keeping a tally? And, like, where were you keeping it? Yes. Was it in Excel? Was it... That's such a good question. In your such notes a app? It a was diary? A, so my... I have a random... I Not me, personally. I should say my dad mm-hmm. has a collection of notebooks from hotels. He loves collecting the little notepads. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. The Bonvoy Marriott, uh, Singapore. Yeah. So I have like a collection of notepads through him, and and I decided to just casually with a one of his pens. I was living at my dad's at the time, and so he shout had out a to collection. living with your shout dad. Shout out to dads. <laughs> shout out to our parents. Our parents, and he had a ton of notepads. So I wrote down all of the. Guys, I was dating with a little, in shorthand, like my chicken scrawl, nothing more involved than like a funny story or a funny thing that happened with this person or a, um, yeah, if there was nothing particularly of note about this person, it was like, yeah, Peter, blah, the end. Yeah. But I think I decided to start tallying or, or writing down all of the names of these guys because I wanted to feel like I was making progress. Mm -hmm. And I love, are you a to-do list person? I love. I have a whiteboard over there that I use for everything. I'm a to-do list person. I love ticking the boxes. I love feeling like I'm accomplishing something. So in my dating life, I felt like I had to. Gamify it. Gamify it a little bit. And I know guys, or I've heard of guys having Excel spreadsheets, but I, I, don't know how to to do Excel, and even <laughs> yeah. if I did, I wouldn't waste my time. Yeah, just writing with a pen and paper is enough for me, mm-hmm. and it helped me feel like I was moving m- forward, moving forward, and yeah. not just having random dates with random people. Yeah, which is kind of what we're doing when we're dating. Yeah, so it it gave form mm-hmm. to something that feels very formless nebulous nebulous yeah correct. totally um i i made an excel spreadsheet one time but it was all of the guys that i had slept with and Ooh. like their stats because i Whoa. wanted to see what their similarities were like if i had any through lines or whatever Ooh. did you find that you had anything like that with the people that you were choosing great question yeah i they were men they were men they were men They were, there was a, and there was a through line in terms of assholioness. There were a handful of guys who I ended up dating a little bit longer than a one first date. It was, I, I, you know, when you're kind of stuck in that three month thing with different guys and the handful of guys who I did date for three months were all assholes. Okay. And I think that is because my previous boyfriend is a sweetheart, Mm -hmm. a kind soul, a put me on a pedestal kind of guy. And I think I was looking for something a little bit, a guy with an edge. So the pendulum swung too far to the left. Mm -hmm. And then I was ended up dating guys who were putting me down a lot, trying to assert their dominance over me through like insults and just. This is during the 50? During the 50. Okay. So what were the percentage of, of assholes that you would. The pers- so I dated a little bit longer, like three guys, and mm-hmm. all three of them were poopy. Those were the... Those were the poopy. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So this was like your first time on the apps. Yes, my very first time. Which apps were we using? All we of them? We were using Hinge and Raya. Okay. And a blip, a little micro moment with Bumble. Mm-hmm. But I find it, I, uh, it's just, 
you're seeing the same people on Bumble as you are on Hinge, and mm-hmm. then you gotta make the first move, which I don't care about making because I did that on Hinge. But then I just it felt redundant. Yeah, it felt redundant. Yeah. You're like, I already saw you today. I saw you. I just saw you. Yeah. What are you doing here? Yeah. Hi. Bye. And then they always send like the, oh, fancy seeing you fancy here. Fancy. Uh, get out. <laughs> get out of there. Yeah. But also, what else is there to say? Right. Um, What were the things that would make you choose these specific people that you would end up going on dates with? Great question. I care about intelligence. Yeah. The ability to have a good conversation outside of just like sitting together at a dinner and like mutually and sc- scrolling on the phone. Mm-hmm. And I want to I want to have engaging conversations. Which eventually becomes intimacy. I guess that's right. <laughs> But in the beginning, right. it's in not beginning, a good sign. That's not what we want. Yeah. I, I was looking for good conversation. Any specific the job type? I was zeroing in on the consultants, the lawyers, the finance bros, mm-hmm. the... No doctors. I don't think I went on any dates. I did try and go on a date with a doctor, but I had a weird, like, stomach buggy thing, and then I showed up, and then... He was trying to diagnose you? Well, no. <laughs> he was like, you don't seem well, and I, like, wasn't well, and I wanted to leave, and then the bartender was like, want some bitters? And I didn't want any bitters, mm-hmm. and the bartender was, like, convinced that the bitters would make me feel better. So I took the bitters, and then I promptly, I was like, I got to go to the bathroom and just pee. Okay. And then the guy was like, are you okay? And I was like, no, we got to get out of here. And, and then he was I, like, I have to go anyway. I'm a to. doctor, and I <laughs> am on call. Yeah. <laughs> so then, no, I think he was like, he was like 12. And then we left. Well, that's when they're on call, though, okay, right. usually. Right. So then he walked me home, and then he was like, here's the name of a doctor. <laughs> to help you with your weird, whatever is ailing you. And then we didn't speak again. But that was, yeah, that was one bar. I did have to make things easier. I had one bar that, my central bar, mm-hmm. where I brought most dates. And this this was the bar. I think everyone should have a bar where they're like, eh, I don't know if this is going to go well with this guy. I'm not sure if it's, if I'm going to be feeling this. So let's bring him to this bar. Yeah. Because you know you like the space. You know you like the space. So it's like you take out one of the variables. Exactly. And it'll be like a quick in and out, seven minute walk from my house. Perfect. Easy to pop in. Yeah. Bartender knew me well with a wink. Like, hey. <laughs> you're uh, back. You're back. How's it going? Uh, and so I think everyone should have a bar in their neighborhood. Because I think it's important for whoever you're dating to make the trek to you the mm-hmm. first, at least the first few times. Mm-hmm. And it's always a red flag if they're trying to like compromise mm-hmm. and like literally meeting in the middle. Come on, guys. The fir- For the first date, can we make a me. little bit more of an effort? Can we walk yeah. a few extra steps? You'll get your steps in. But what if somebody was like, because I know I've heard a lot of people being like, I find it so attractive when like the guy makes the plan and like sends me a car uh, or whatever. Yes. Like, if somebody was like, oh, I've been thinking about this restaurant, would that be appealing to <laughs> if you? If it's a second date. Because first date dinners can be a little aggressive. And that right. was a that mistake. That was my next question. Yes, was always was drinks first? Always drinks first. I did have a moment where I went, I had a first dinner date with like a, I'm now 35. At the time, I was 33. The guy I went on the date with was like 28. He was a literal Infante. He was a child. <laughs> and we went to Chisiamo. And he was like, wow, this is fancy. Like, I was like, what and why? But he, t- in fairness, he paid. That mm-hmm. was very kind. But I, I have a habit of making reservations way out in advance at restaurants that are hard to get okay. reservations at. So okay. I was like, oh, it was like, your reservation at Chisiamo is coming up. So I asked this guy, I was like, yo, want to join? Mm-hmm. Come through. So then we went and had a meal together. Was the conversation pitiful? Yes. Was I enjoying my pasta? No. Because when you enjoy when you enjoy the company and the conversation, that makes the food taste better. But the food is not going to taste good when the company is brand new. And when your brain your, like is your, somewhere else and you're like trying so hard like to make conversation or be interested. Um, exactly. You're like, can I even take a bite? And it's like now it's cold and yeah. like yeah. It, it, I was trying to smush too many variables into the same event and I that was something that I did a lot of I was early on going on 
three or four dates in a day. Like, what? Yeah. There was, I once had like two brunch dates and then two dinner dates. Oh my God. And that was like, that was my low or my high. Like I, I got four dates in, but then I was like, I'm, don't even know my name. And I don't even know. I can't speak a word again. If one of those guys that you went on a date with at the same day oh. as three other women or three other men. I know. No, oh. if he had been doing the same thing, would that offend you? Like, would you be like, you're a no. dog? It wouldn't offend me because okay. I would think like, wow, you're efficient with yeah. your time. <laughs> like, good for you because that's what I'm trying to do too. And like, like oh, and we you don't probably know, each know other. Excel too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's like speed dating, but it's like in different dating. locations. And as they all say, it's a numbers game. Yeah. So, yeah. So, re it being a numbers game, because a lot of times when people say that, it's like, it only takes one. And that Correct. means you'll end up with that one person. You were just getting out of a breakup. Was your intention to get into another relationship or just to like meet a bunch of new people? It was to get into a new relationship. Okay. Yeah. I wanted and continue to want to meet someone who I'm going to marry. Mm -hmm. And having never had the time or given myself the time to go on a bunch of dates yeah. I have never dated in my life. I don't know. When did I start like like kissing a human? I don't know. 20, 21? Late bloomer? 21? Okay. So in my 12 years of being with other people, I had never, ever really gone on dates. I'd only ever just jumped into one, from mm -hmm. one relationship to another. So I wanted to actually get it in. My, get, get it in and yeah. like uh, feel like I was in the driver's seat yeah. because... I always happened to just have relationships fall into my lap and then they would drag out and then I was questioning whether they were ever right for me. And so I was like, I want to make myself feel like I'm in control of this whole, you know, relationship thing. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go on a bunch of dates. And I, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. it reminds me, um, I don't know, I'm sure the listeners are sick of hearing this, but maybe, maybe you missed it. But when I broke up with my ex and I was like 24, I realized I hadn't had any random sex. Ooh. Um, and I used the apps for that. Whoa. And I was like, okay, like I've only slept with seven guys. I want to like get my numbers up or whatever. And looking back on that, I'm like, I, it probably would have been better to just do the dating thing. Yeah. Um, because sex is like, you don't go out to have – it's like you should be what present app? with the person. Was it Tinder or Hinge? Tinder, or? Bumble, okay. Hinge, Raya, okay. yeah, all yeah, of them. all of them. And, um, yeah, sometimes you're just like, I need to, like, do the spree that I've been hearing other people yeah. have gone on. Or, and I think the one with dating, too, is, like, if you are dating to marry, mm -hmm. you're thinking, okay, well, my forever person – that's going to be a thing eventually. Mm -hmm. So I might as well meet as many people as possible and like put myself in situations where I won't have any regrets if I'm like locked down eventually. Yeah. Was it kind of like that vibe? Absolutely. I think I met so many different kinds of people and had a vision. I think I made a list in early on of certain criteria that I wanted from a guy and then like going on dates with guys who I thought I w would m match that criteria. It's like, oh, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of an example. Yeah, like what was the criteria? Well, classic finance bro. Like so many finance bros were just had the personality of a cantaloupe. Yeah. So that's hard to find, uh -huh. find personality, uh, so someone with personality. I'm looking for a man in finance. Yeah. Six five, not boring, nice. <laughs> my friend recently married a finance bro and I like ran into her and she told me about it. And I was like, like, you know, friend I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. And I was like, oh, finance. Ooh. And she goes, nobody's a nice one. He's just like Canadian and loves math. That's sweet. <laughs> yeah. I want that. Yeah. Give me, that sounds like nice. I think I walked away from that experience thinking more about what I want to feel in a relationship and less how this guy ticks the boxes their stats. Um, and their stats yeah because I'm an educated lady and so I want to be with someone who is equally educated and intelligent you know the banter and all of that but at the end of the day 
mm-hmm. if this person is giving you all the banter, but then they're not giving you water mm-hmm. when you're thirsty, mm-hmm. bare minimum, then you don't want to be with that person. Yeah. So my list has changed to reflect how I want someone to make me feel, how they're, you know, treating me on a daily basis, if they're engaged in conversation, if they're listening to what I'm saying and, and how I'm feeling instead of this person went to Yale Law. Yeah. Like 20 years ago. Do yeah. we, like, ultimately, this person went to Yale Law 20 years ago and he is a poopy pants today. So mm-hmm. you got to, it's, it's irrelevant. Lots of poop. Your schooling Lots is irrelevant. Poop. If you sorry, so much poop. <laughs> so much poop. I I need a new adjective. Anyway, so this is what I've walked away from that experience thinking like, yes, credentials are important, but how this person makes you feel is more important. Mm-hmm. How many of the dates uh were fun? Such a good question. I consider myself a fun date. I, yeah. I bring the noise. I bring the funk. I bring the energy and the enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. And so there were maybe, maybe zero. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like maybe there were fun in the sense like this person is really funny and making me laugh. Probably zero. What? But, yeah, Out of but 50? fun in the sense of like I'm very attracted to this person and I really want to make out with them. Yes. Okay. But genuinely out of 50, no one was funny. Oh, wow. Yeah, no one gave me a real hearty, genuine chuckle. No knee slappers. No knee slappers. Were there any that you were like, I want to continue this conversation? It's interesting. Exactly. Okay. Yes. There was one guy, one lawyer who was very smart, like brilliant, and knew a lot about things, Mm -hmm. enjoyed reading up on things. Mm Mm-hmm. And he was curious, and I really enjoyed talking to him. So I was excited for our second date and third date and fourth date until he became, dare I say it, a poopy pants. Oh, no. Yeah. He was in the category of guys who was just had asshole vibes because he had a fundamental insecurity Mm. with the size of his uh, apartment. (laughs) What was your, like, mental state like at the time? Like, were you very secure going into the dates? I would like to think that I am, I read as very secure. And I actually don't, I was never nervous. The only time I was incredibly nervous was my very first date in October after having a dry dating spell, obviously, because I was in a relationship for, like, four years. So Mm -hmm. I hadn't dated anyone for nearly four years. So I was super nervous for my first date and feeling insecure. Like, who am I to go on a date? Yeah. So out of the dating game that I, I I was like, I'm 33. Who am I to go on a date? Who would want to date me? Who would want to go on a date with me? So Mm -hmm. I felt unworthy, insecure, undeserving of even a date and just felt ridiculous is the word. You know, what's so funny is when I was doing my little spree, yeah. I remember looking at the number of my age on the, you know, bio or whatever. Yeah. I think I was like 25 during this time. Oh, my gosh. And I remember being like, I am expired. Like, right. who is going to want to date a 25-year-old? Like, Absurd. at that point, people had started getting married. But it was like, it felt like at least everybody else was like in their relationships. And it was like, it's too late for me, which right. is absurd. A feel, it's absurd and it's a feeling that I've always had Yeah, as like a woman that you're never young enough and stuff. And it's like, it's really nice to recognize, even if you don't fully believe it, mm-hmm. like rationally, mm-hmm. there are people who are older than you. There are people who are younger than you. You probably look very similar to how you did when you were like I have this picture of me when I was 16 and I'm like I look 45 in that picture (laughs) like I don't know if it's like a like an aging thing or like a just like seeing the number being like this is not an okay Mm -hmm. age for people to be dating at and it's Mm -hmm. like people are going to be dating our entire lives Correct. I know 70 year olds who are single and dating yeah I know people who are getting out of their first marriage and getting back into dating. Like, yeah. it's all, you're never too old to be dating. 
Correct. And like, yeah, I've I've had pangs of that as young as 25 mm-hmm. and as young as even like 16 that I was like. Do you think growing up in New York City too? Yeah, but also just like society. But I think the number also when you're looking at it and thinking about, oh, well, they're looking at this number for other people too. There are so many younger ones. Uh-huh. Why would they? And it's like, because they're a mature person and. Right. And if they aren't looking at you that way. You're in their your age range. You're in a, of course, A in their age range. But if they are looking at your age with disdain, and disdain then <laughs> yeah. they're not for you. Yeah. And then you have self-selected. You've weed, weeded them out. And then they're not going to reach out to you. And that's mm-hmm. fine. The people who are interested will reach out to you. There are plenty of, plenty of fish. Plenty of fish. Plenty of fish. So. But yeah, I just surprised myself with being like, wait, if they do see that number, they put an age range. Exactly. They included that. They included that. So I am there. Yeah. Because they wanted me to be here. Yeah. In the in the lovely algorithm. In the pool. In the pool. Yeah. Okay. So you were feeling maybe a little old, but you were still secure. Yeah. How many of the dates ended in a, a kiss? Great question. <laughs> I only had one date end in a kiss, oh. and I didn't want the kiss. He leaned in and was like a slobber pussaroo, and it was not not what I wanted. Mm-hmm. I'm never a kiss after the first date kind of person. And because I don't feel, I feel like we're just talking and getting to know each other. So it feels almost forced to like force a kiss on someone because you're just getting to know each other. Even if there is like amazing chemistry, I just think it almost feels unnatural. I can't explain it. And that's maybe okay, that's yeah. me saying that maybe I haven't met someone who I felt so such a connection yeah. with immediately that I'm like, I have to just put my mouth on this person's face. I think sometimes you feel that and sometimes you're doing the kiss to just like seal the deal, being like, ah, seal the deal. We like each other. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you don't have to kiss to prove that. Correct. Like prove it by asking me on another date. Correct. Yeah. I, I find it so much more attractive when a guy says, uh, even immediately after the date, verbally to me in person. Mm-hmm. This was really fun. Can we, I'd like to do this again. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, there are so many assholes who say that and then they don't text. Yeah. But for a guy to be clear about his feelings and intentions instead of kissing me, to show it, to just say with his words, can I take you out on another date? I yeah. would like that. So none of the first dates ended up in sex? No. I, I can't. As someone who gets attached Mm-hmm. Quite easily through the act of sex. Coitus. Coitus. Yeah. <laughs> I was helping a sister out by just not not even doing that because I knew I would get crazy, mm-hmm. like mentally, if I didn't hear from this person afterwards. For sure. So I was just protecting myself. Okay. So yeah. how many first dates turned into second dates? I would say maybe 10 okay. or 11. And then maybe like five of them turned into like sex. Six. Sex. Six. <laughs> six, six. Correct. Yeah. And I think the th- someone was saying the other day, always give someone three dates before mm-hmm. you decide whether they're you should move forward. But there are some dates that I had where it was a clear no. that's a no for me. Yeah. Based on the fact that we had no chemistry. Yeah. I don't think you need to give someone three dates if you are not feeling it. Yeah. At all on the first date. Feels like a lot of time to give to a person. A lot of time to give to a person. And I think we all have friends in our circle who are coupled up Mm -hmm. and they want to kind of live vicariously through your stories or they want to be helpful in a way that they don't know. So they're like, go on the date, Mm -hmm. do it, Mm -hmm. go on the third date, go give it another chance and doubting your intuition and your gut feeling about it. And they're like, and you clearly don't want to, but then they want you to. And it's There are people I've heard of who have like pushed through the first three terrible dates and then they end up with like this person that they're like, oh, like they are my soulmate. Really? Or, yeah. I mean, these are all like secondhand accounts. Like I've never huh. heard it from like the horse's mouth. But um, I think that's why people say that. That's like give... Give, right. give them another chance to be in another setting or give them another chance to like get to know you better or whatever. Yeah. And like, yeah, that can work out. But also sometimes you do have an intuition yeah. that you're I, just like, it's not a vibe. Not a vibe. Yeah. And I think that's something that I was proud of that I 
cultivated for myself last year because I was always doubting myself or leaning on other people's opinions Mm -hmm. to guide my decisions. And so I was really able to strengthen that muscle throughout last year of like, nope, this is a no for me and I'm sticking to it. And I'm not going to let my family or my friends dictate like whether to go on the date or not. Were you telling family and friends like about the dates? Yes. Okay. Yes, I was telling, but I think going forward, I'm going to be a little bit more cagey about it because (laughs) I love a good story and that's why I'm here to to share my story. So I love like regaling people with all the tales Mm -hmm. and the details, but then I become kind of like a spectacle and it's like, a, not a freak show, but it's like, oh, look at her living her wacky life, wacky gal. Yeah. And I do it for the entertainment. Kind of like, I wonder if you have ever felt this way because you're a comedian. Like, you want to get material. Do it for the story. But you do it for the story. So yeah. I was almost like going on these dates at one point for the story to share with other people to make myself seem more interesting. But then it makes those situations less um they make them more disingenuous yeah. because you're not like fully committed to like, oh, I'm here right now and I'm having this experience. I'm I'm thinking about how I'm going to tell other people about it later. Completely. I'm completely distracted by that and essentially not living my life for myself, but living it for other people, Mm -hmm. which is not a good place to be in. So I think going forward, I'm going to keep. Keep it. Cards close to your chest. Keep them. Yeah. I also say too, um, I used to have this little manifesto date like you have a boyfriend. Ooh. <laughs> ah. And you guys can listen to the description of that on uh, Robbie Hoffman and David Yaris's episode seasons ago. I think it's even season one. Um, but one of the things was don't tell a lot of people or like if you have one person that you tell about stuff, like keep it to that one person. But mostly don't like tell the stories or read the conversations that you're having with this person to other people because it can get you actually more attached Yes. because then you're, you're replaying those stories and you're assigning like more meaning to them. And then the other person, this is less about like uh, intuition and more about like protecting like yourself from falling in love by accident. Yeah. 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 You're making this, date or the story a bigger part of your life you're magnifying it you're telling everybody yeah. and then it's becoming part of your life and then you're like oh this person is part of my life now I guess yeah right, right. so that's something I'm and not- then it makes it harder to cut it off if that's the thing that you need to do yeah yeah um so I'm assuming a bunch of these first dates did ask you for second ones Gr- yeah that, a great question. that you rejected yeah there, I'm working on saying, like, I had a great time, but it, I, I, there were maybe only a handful of times where I said I had a great time, but I don't, I was feeling more of a friendship vibe. Mm-hmm. And I have a hard time even saying that because I hate letting people down and I'm a people pleaser. Mm-hmm. So this was a really good exercise for me in, like, saying no mm-hmm. with grace and polite politeness and kindness kindness yeah. and there were a few times when I was ghosted or a guy just said like hey like I don't see this going anywhere and that was like a knife mm-hmm. a n- knife to the gut because I have never I've just been in these long-term relationships so I haven't had experience with dating and rejection yeah and I'm glad that I had that because it's exposure therapy. It's exposure therapy and you realize, oh my God, if this this is nothing. It, it doesn't for a yeah, day. Yeah, but it then, doesn't change how I view me. Right. Yeah. And. Which if it does, I've been there. Yeah, there were a couple of occasions where I had to block the person mm-hmm. because they were pushy and they were not respectful of the natural ebb and flow of the ghosting. Like they didn't understand that this is a a ghost. Yeah. This is a ghost. Like, it's not like they sent me a text and asked me to dinner. I, like, I repeatedly said, like, no, that doesn't work for me. And then they would say, like, well, what about drinks then? Mm-hmm. And then I said, no. And then they're like, well, what about, and I'm like, no, no, it's not working. 
Um, and in retrospect, I could have just said, hey, I'm feeling more of a friendship vibe. Yeah. But these particular people were not nice people. These were like egotistical assholes. So my thinking was that they wouldn't have taken it well. And maybe they would have. Who, mm. Who's to say? Mm -hmm. And that's some growing up that I have to do to just be more straightforward. Yeah, because even if they don't take it well, like they don't have your address. Right. What are they going to do? Right. Um, but also people can be scary and you never know, you never know. Yeah. But, um, a lot of the times I think when people are like, oh, I see more of a friendship vibe. Like, is there a better, like, is anyone actually intending to become friends with somebody that they went on a date with? And <laughs> did you ever become friends with any of these guys? I did become friends with one guy. Okay. But it was in the, it was through the mutual understanding that the dinner date that we were going on was a friend date. So I called mm. him. We were set up, and then I was not attracted. Like, mm -hmm. I, I was like, oh, I've met this guy. I'm not going to be attracted. So I initiated a text. I said, hey, would you like to have a friend dinner date with me? Mm -hmm. And I've never really done that because I've mostly had, like, female friends. I've never reached out to a guy to say, hey, would you like to be a, my guy friend? Yeah. I've never done that. So we are still in touch as friends, but I'm not friends with any of the other guys. But I don't see that as a loss. No. I don't see it as a time, as a waste of time that I met all these people and now I don't talk to them because it was more of like a personal growth moment. Yeah. And have you ever run into any of them after? No, I haven't. Okay. But if I did. Big city like New York. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Ten of them ended in sex, not the first dates, but mm -hmm. second or third or whatever. Yeah. Oh, not. No, no. Ten of them didn't end in sex. Um, ten of them had second had dates. Had second dates. Okay. So how many of the it, second dates? It ended in sex. Um, two. Wow. Yeah. Two. So out of 50 first dates, you guys. Two. Yeah. But that's because, and I'm not throwing shade at anyone who if they made all of those 50 first dates lead to sex, mm -hmm. good for you. Mm -hmm. I am just someone who knows myself and I know that I get attached yeah. to people who I have sex with routinely. Yeah. And so I wanted to be smart about who I was having sex with because if I saw a potential future with this person, great, let's have sex because like chemistry and like having sex is important to me. So I want to make sure that like we're having good sex. So let's have sex. But if I... If I have sex with someone, and I've this has happened to me in college where I've had sex with someone and I didn't hear back and it mm -hmm. like destroyed me. Mm -hmm. I have a brain that clings, that can get obsessive. And knowing that, I wanted to protect myself. It's also oxytocin. Oxytocin. Hormone exactly. that's released in female bodied Which is people not while we're having sex that makes us think males. we're in love with you. No, they, I actually have a joke about this. They, um, I, sh I shouldn't even set myself up like that. No, so um, yeah. they release it more allegedly when they're looking at a dog for the first time. No. Mm -hmm. When they're looking at a dog. Mm. <gasps> yeah. So I used to have a joke. Or I still do it sometimes that like, uh, when Ben and I first started hooking up, I was falling in love with him. He wasn't falling in love with me. Why? I Googled it. Google told me all this stuff about oxytocin. And so the next time we were having sex, I like pulled out my dog from under my pillow. I was like, oh, look at my dog. Now look at me. Look at my dog. <laughs> Tricked him. Does he know about the, jo the dog joke? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. And it's not real. Does he like dogs? Enough, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Does he think they're cute? Like, do you think, have you asked him point blank, do you love the dog? A dog more. Like. Well, this dog in the joke doesn't exist. Okay, doesn't exist. Okay, fine. Yeah. I don't know why I thought you had a dog, but then I quickly remembered. My mom has a dog, you but a, she'd be a little a large kitty. to lift in bed. Kitty, yeah. Imagine I'm I'm fucking and I'm like, look at Grace. And she's like, Tsh. <laughs> <laughs> like oh. That's sad that they don't release oxytocin with kitties. They probably do. I'm oh. sure I'm sure it depends no, on I don't think they do. what what people find cute. Um but yeah, it's less when they're like being intimate yeah. than us. And, uh, yeah, for that reason, like sometimes you have to protect yourself. If you're a person that isn't affected by oxytocin or like you are trying to do the thing that I was trying to do, which is 
get it in with yeah. as many people. Like yeah. people have different goals. Right. Um, but your goal was like, I want to find a person that I'm going to end up with. And so I'm going to do things on the terms where I am comfortable this entire time. Correct. Like I want to start the relationship well. Yeah. I realize that's very boring. Now, it's not boring. Now that I'm sharing that. No. Maybe that's juicy. Well, there was one story we can tell that's like a little juicy. Which one? With the nipple covers. Oh. I once went on a date with a guy. This is who, no shade to anyone who does this. It was just the I went, first time you were. I went on a date it. with a guy mm-hmm. who was wearing a T-shirt that was a solid color. Yeah. So at no point did I think, "Wow, check out those nipples under that shirt." Yeah. Because a men have nipples. Isn't that a book? Most men have nipples, or All men or no? Have nipples. <laughs> Anyway, he took his shirt off while we were making out, and I went to, like, kind of fondle the teat uh-huh. area, Yeah. and he, and I felt something. I thought it was abandoned, and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. And he said, oh, no, those are my nipple covers. And he proceeded to fling them off of his nips, throw them on the ground as if there was nothing wrong with the act of wearing nipple covers and then flinging them off during a makeout. And I asked, because why are you wearing the nipple covers? And he said, well, they were showing through my shirt. Yeah. And his shirt was solid color. Which is a very, very good reason to wear nipple color covers. We do it all the time. Like, I'll wear nipple covers if my nipples are showing through a shirt. But yeah. also, I've never let someone take off my shirt while still having the nipple, like the nipple covers, Samantha on, right. Jones. I'm I bring up Sex and City all the time. Samantha Jones has this one episode where she's wearing fake nipples to make to actually accentuate the nips, <laughs> like to give the hard nip look or whatever. And then she like gets into like the makeout phase or whatever, and she like turns around ever so subtly and <laughs> pops them off and throws them away. You know, whatever. Yes. Um. So like. Right, so now I'm thinking, am I sexist? Because like women do that. Like I've I've worn yeah, but w- you don't, nipple you stickers s- before. And taking and your I've, shirt off I've showing removed them. I've removed them before we You remove them. So maybe he should have removed them. He should have removed them, them before the makeout. Unless he like wanted you to know yeah. I wear nipple covers. Right. Are you okay with this? Right. He didn't say that. He just casually said, like, oh, those are my nipple covers. And I, I a so certain point yeah. thought like oh my god was he running a marathon before this yeah, nipple chafing chafe? yeah is he chafing no because we went on it was a dinner like dinner we were sitting there like you're not running a marathon while you're eating spaghetti yeah like, so that to me was it a deal breaker no because i saw this guy again yeah there were other things <laughs> <laughs> that were nice about him ultimately he turned out to be not so nice and I think maybe I should have paid attention to the nipple covers. That should have been a, a I don't flag. even think the nipple – I think it's the not taking off them and confronting you yes. with the nipple covers yes. and being like, deal with this. Yes, yes, yes. Like, because I feel like anytime you're seeing new nipples, it's like, ooh. <laughs> you know, like this is kind of like whatever. And it's like – it's like he's like testing you a little mm. to be like, are you going to comment on my only areolas? Like, what if you would assume <laughs> the nipple covers were the nipples? Like, Well, it made me think more about men's nipples, certainly, because I have never thought, I've never spent a lot of time comparing men's nipples or thinking about my ex-boyfriend's nipples or like, mm. who has a good looking nipple? Yeah. But he gave me a, a lot of pause. and. <laughs> and then I spent some time looking at his nipples afterwards after he removed the nipple covers. And I was like, they're kind of puffy. Like, they're all puffy. So he was insecure about his nipples. Like, he was definitely made fun of maybe as a kid or something. Someone was like, dude, your nipples are fucked up. But, like, they were puffy. But, like, if you had just shown them to me, if he was just shirtless on yeah. the beach, I never would have thought twice about his nipples. Yeah. But seeing him remove the sticker. Mm-hmm. Which you can get on Amazon for eighteen ninety nine <laughs> for a pack of ten. I looked these up. It, were they the jelly kind or were they Not the, the gauzy jelly. kind? Gauzy. Okay. Gauzy, like he those was, are even cheaper. Yeah. So he was. It was a gauzy. Uh, I hate the gel ones. They like add nipple to your nipple. Yeah, and then they add. They're just like sticky. Yeah. And the sticky residue. Then it's like, oh no, you can't see my nipples, but you can see like a perfect circle <laughs> under my top. <laughs> I honestly like would have rather that because. I, the gauziness made me think that he was injured. Right. So I was like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. What did I do? 
I also anyway. love that you rub a chest during your first makeout. <laughs> <laughs> right, I was like fondling his his boobs. Yeah. He didn't have boobs though. He didn't even have boobs. I was just kind of Yeah, I guess does one do do you do that one during a makeout? I don't do know you, like, what rub I rub a guy's do. chest. I mean I, like I guess yeah, of course I do it with like Ben, like but I've known him and like <laughs> we've been sleeping together like I actually don't think I've ever done like the slow love th or like the slow dating thing that you have done yeah. in this experience yeah. where it's like I I would want to seal the deal with people I would want to mm -hmm. give them a kiss mm -hmm. I would uh and if I was kissing them I would probably fucking them mm -hmm. but I think because I didn't genuinely like anybody mm -hmm. I wasn't wanting to fondle really anything I was just wanting to get it over with interesting interesting yeah no I was doing this slow because actually with him on the first few dates I there was a connection mm -hmm. and I was attracted and then I think maybe was it me just like removing his shirt in retrospect no I think it was like a little remove shirt removal and like a little tit fondle but before Teat. you had anything removed <laughs> <laughs> which I love oh yeah yeah, so that will go down in the books as a as a moment. Yeah. And then I do have I'm trying to think what else. The the puking in the bathroom moment. I mean that when I was sick and had the yeah. stomach flu and then the bartender was like, Do you want some bitters? That was a low. That was a low. And that's another thing that I went into all of these dates thinking that I wouldn't drink because I during my relationship I didn't drink at all okay so when I went on my first day I was like okay I guess I'm just not gonna drink and this was I was starting to drink again because I found not that I'm I'm not sober but I didn't drink for three and a half years really and I'm not sober but I wanted to it just wasn't drinking was not part of my life yeah and when I was dating again I felt like I had to reintroduce drinking mm. just to make the other person feel more comfortable for the conversation to go more smoothly yeah but now I don't want to do that and yeah. I'm okay ordering like a stupid mocktail and bringing yeah. my a game and my personality and if they don't like it or they're uncomfortable with me drinking like a dumb mocktail okay bye okay bye okay bye yeah okay bye but I I wasted a lot of like mornings the next day being just like really hung over mm -hmm. just so I could have make the other person feel like oh the conversation's flowing this is going great even though I didn't see it necessarily going anywhere I was like let's or, yeah, yeah we'll have another drink yeah and that's another thing that I'm going to cut off if I'm not feeling a vibe you don't have to have a second drink yeah and there's nothing worse than the bar the waiter coming over and being like should we have another drink and mm. the guy's like yeah I think I'll have and I'll just now you can be like I'll get a soda I, or no I'm just gonna be like no soda oh yeah Check. well if you're not liking Check. the vibe yeah. if I'm not liking the vibe correct yeah, yeah, but yeah. if I like the vibe but I don't want to have a second drink nothing wrong with a little ginger beer yeah a like, little ginger ale a little ginger ale a little ginger ale a little water a little Shirley Temple yeah sure 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 a oh, sure a little Shirl Shirl a Shirl actually do you have a Shirl I'll take a Shirl oh yeah I'll get you a Shirl <laughs> Shul. What's Shul? Is Shul school or temple? I have no idea. Okay. We should know Bad this. Jews. <laughs> <laughs> shul. <laughs> Shurl. What's Shul? Shul. Um, okay. And so when you realized you hit 50. Yes. Were you like, okay, I'm never going on a date again. Like well, what, what was the end of it or was there an end? Well, then it led to a relationship. One the 51st of... date led to a relationship. What? Yes. What? This is a guy who I broke up with. Recently. Led, recently led to my, was my 51st date. Whoa. And whether that was subconscious or not, because I wasn't actually looking at the time. Yeah. I then got into a relationship. So... Yeah, I I think in between my 50th day and the 51st date, I took some time off. Like I took like two weeks off of dating or three weeks and it felt like maybe a little bit of a milestone. It didn't feel depressing. I was like, wow, you've accomplished something. Yeah. Even though you're not in a relationship now, this means that you've gained some self-knowledge. You know what you like and what put you don't like. Out there. You put yourself out there yeah. and you've made it not a a you've I've acquired a skill because mm -hmm. dating is a skill mm -hmm. you if you don't know how 
to date because you haven't been dating, then... Time to start. Time to start. Yeah. And you build that skill by, like, doing... You build a skill by doing something repeatedly over and over again, and you get better at it, and you get more discerning about what you... You get more discerning about, like, certain responses from guys, or if they say certain thing a certain way, Mm -hmm. that means a certain thing. So you just get better at reading people. Were there any... Because I'm I'm thinking about... Okay, 50 first dates. Uh This sounds like... (sighs) Not boring, but... Yeah. Um... I'm not saying talking about it. I'm saying like to go through it sounds like, are you telling the same stories over and over again? Such a good question. Yeah. I became a one trick pony in terms of the things that I was saying. So I I was like watching myself saying the same things over and over again. I was like, ah, tell a different story. Like, and as the, Stand up. Yeah. So for me, as like an entertainer, as someone who wants to like make someone laugh, I was saying the same jokes and I was like, yeah. getting the same responses. And I was mm-hmm. like, the first few times I was like, made them laugh. And then this 10th time they laughed because I told the same joke. I was like, eh, it doesn't hit the same way. So I was trying to. You're like, to... wait, did I already do that bit tonight? Yeah. Was that you or the guy at brunch? <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was trying, towards the end, trying to make the conversation feel more like varied and organic. Mm-hmm. But I have a hard time with like control so I'm always asking all the questions during the dates and like that diversifies the conversation because you're trying to learn more about them than like displaying like this is who I am and like like me exactly oh that's a that's so the one time that guys were or this the times that guys were asking me questions and I was telling the same story over and over again I was always trying to just flip it and ask them questions yeah it was more varied. That's a great, great thing to do. Yeah. Did you have any topics that were like off limits that people would ask you and you would be like, no, I'm not talking great about that. Great question. What a great question. There was never any time where I felt uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And I think most of the guys were respectful enough that if they sensed that I didn't want to talk about something, they would preface it by saying like, and you don't have to talk about this if you don't want yeah. to. Maybe it was something like, oh, your previous relationships and we don't have to talk about that if yeah. you don't want to. But religion, money, any of that, if it did come up, it was never uncomfortable. Uh huh. Because I'm not an off-limits kind of person. Yeah. I'll just say like, Yeah. See, I feel like I'm a bit of an oversharer where if somebody asks me like, oh, what is the structure of like your relationship with this person or whatever? Yeah. I'll be like, well, I'll let me fucking exactly tell you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I think I'm good at evading a genuine answer by making something funny or like sharing a light response. So I will respond, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be 100% the truth because they don't need to. It's not their business. Yet. They don't yet. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. They don't. It's not their place to know the truth. Yeah. They don't need to know it. Yeah. So I can give a response. I'm all about like in the moment, I don't want to make this uncomfortable and awkward. So I can respond a certain way that will keep the conversation light and the mood light mm-hmm. without. So and, I can, and while still asserting my boundaries. Yeah. So if they were to say something like, how's your parents relationship? Right. I'll say like, well, they're divorced. They're, they're close in their own way, but I don't need to get into the nitty gritty of like, my parents got divorced when I was yeah. eight, like yeah. this many years old and this thing happened and it, all of these things happened and this is what happened here and it's none of their business. Mm-hmm. So I don't feel like I need to overshare. I'll just say like, I can, you, you can state facts. Yeah. You can state the facts. Without the feelings. Without the feelings. Yeah. Yeah. See, for me... I'm like thinking now, I'm like, maybe that's why these dates weren't fun. Ooh, because I was stating the facts. Like, I don't know. And not the feelings. Or maybe you just didn't like them. But like, I'm like, I feel like I always have fun when I'm like getting like deep with people. Getting juicy. Yeah. Yeah. But also, why do you feel the need to do that on the first meeting? Like, it could still just be like lighthearted and... I like, yeah, I like a a goofy banter. I'm okay with, like, the conversation we just had, like, shul. Like, 
What are, what are Cheryl, Shirley Temple, Shul, Shul, what is Shul? Like, I, that's a great conversation for me. That's a great first date. Mm. Like, being goofy and weird and, mm-hmm. like, funny banter. Millennial core. Millennial core doesn't what they need think to get that we to are. divorce core. Okay. <laughs> until, like, third or fourth or fifth date. Doesn't need to go there. Yeah. And that, to me, is still my idea of a, of a great date. Yeah. Um, Can we talk about your relationship that you just got out of? I can say... That I got into a relationship, it ended recently, and I was hopeful that it would work, Mm -hmm. but it didn't, (laughs) and maybe something about the 51st date, I was like, this has to be it. Yeah. Was, I was forcing a narrative on my journey, and sometimes everything, sometimes things in life don't happen with, like, a bow. Totally. Yeah. So you're going to have, like ups and downs and your life isn't going to go like a rom-com so even though I hadn't seen 50 first dates the movie maybe I was being told constantly 50 first dates and then this was the 50 first date I was like we gotta lock this in this has to be it because the arc of this story ends with they uh, ride off into the sunset correct yeah and life is not like that so if your life isn't following the narrative of like a rom-com that's okay. That's keep life. Going. That's life. You keep moving forward and you don't have to have the ride off into the sunset, you know. No, some things can just things, be an experience, it whether it's experience one date or it's a, it could be a learning experience. year-long Correct. relationship. Like everything teaches you something for the next thing. Correct. And also what I learned from that is that I'm not living for someone else to tell that story to that's something that happened to me yeah because I was living to be like and then we met yeah and then we met I was very excited to share that story yeah and so what I learned from this experience is that this is something that happened to me but it didn't work out and I'm gonna continue to move on and like Mm -hmm. you know when you tell people like oh it didn't work work out they're like oh I mean some people are like I'm so like I was like I'm sorry you're going through that I never liked him (laughs) (laughs) right right but when when these things happen part of me has always felt like I'm not living for someone else but I don't want to disappoint other people totally so you can disappoint other people but not disappoint your I would have disappointed myself in the long term in the long term yeah yeah so that's the moral of the story Date for yourself, live your life for yourself, get into a relationship for you and not for anyone else. And get out of one for you And get out of one for you. Amen. Amen. Are you planning on um, going on any dates anytime soon? I am going on a date tomorrow with a mensch who reached out during the earthquake and he said this earthquake really shook up my life the way... You shook up my life when we only went on one date. Oh and my I never god, heard I would vomit. <laughs> Wait, in a good way or like? No, a- I think in a bad way. Wait, really? <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's beautiful and it's clever. I think and- it, was it? But he was supposed. It was but he was funny. joking. He was joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was totally joking. I mean, that was the foundation of our first date, like humor the whole time and him making jokes. Yeah. So I thought that was funny. So. We're going on a date tomorrow. I'm excited. Maybe he'll vibrate your foundation. <laughs> <laughs> One can only hope. One can only hope. And if not... There's another. There's you. There's me who can vibrate my own yeah. foundation. Um, Mystery guest, this has been so fun to talk to it's you been about. been wonderful. Yeah. And um, I hope you come back another time. Thank you. As, a, uh, as maybe even yourself. Woo! But for a different topic. Lovely. Okay. Um, I have to ask this to every guest after a sexual experience, which we had some sexual experiences in here. Uh, Mystery guest, did you finish? I did. Okay, great. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Of course. Okay. Um, I finished too. And uh, yeah, you guys, if you like this podcast, we were only going to do that. That last episode was going to be the season finale of uh, How Come with Ben, but You know, sometimes after 50 first dates, you need the 51st date. Mm. And that was this episode. So thank you for being our bonus mystery guest. My pleasure. If you have not rated, reviewed, and subscribed to the podcast already, please do that. It helps everybody out so much. 
and uh, we appreciate it. Follow me at Remy Casimir. Follow the podcast at How Come Podcast. If you have any questions or any uh, stories that you want to share, we didn't do a congratulations episode on this season. We're going to do it next season. So if you want to share your congrats with me, you can hop on the mic and uh, tell me a little story. And uh, it can be anonymous. It could have your name attached to it. Whatever you want. Uh, we are taking a little time off, you know, it's been a few months, maybe a few months more until next season, because I've been having the same thing as mystery guests where I feel like I've been living for you guys. And I do. I live for you guys. I love you. But it's getting weird when I'm having sex or masturbating and I'm thinking about how am I going to tell them about this? And I voiced that to you guys before. So I'm just taking some time to like have some normal sex and life experience and we will be back we'll always be back because we love you and I've even missed you in this interim so know that we will be back um, and I just wanted to say that I appreciate you guys so much for sticking around this season and uh, everybody who's st on the Patreon, patreon.com slash how come has extras for this episode and every other one. It's also got video. So if you are missing me or you want to hear more from the people that you know and love, go there. And um, yeah, thank you guys again. And we'll see you next season on how come. Bye. It's not you, it's me. I try so hard to finish honestly They say you'll know When you go all the way from A right down to O Oh no I think that I still got a ways to go Oh oh I'm sick of this and I have got to know How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just.